things every new lawyer should know about disability law. I don't know if I'm going to get 10 things, but I'm going to get some things. Um, disability law generally refers to a system of primarily federal statutes, civil rights statutes, that have the, the broad goal of eliminating discrimination on the basis of disability. Uh, put more simply, the purpose of these laws is to ensure that people with disabilities can live in the same places, can go to the same schools, can enjoy the same services, and work in the same fields as people without disabilities. Um, <clears throat> Historically, people with disabilities have been discriminated against uh, overtly and sometimes inadvertently um, through various ways uh, the system is, is made. Uh, pers persons with disabilities are the most recent addition to the federally protected classes. So we've got race, color, national origin, religion. I may have dropped one out there, but unlike those protected classes, uh, disability requires at times uh, an extra step. So it's not enough that you don't have a, a policy that says we don't serve deaf people in this law office. You may be required to provide at your expense uh, an American Sign Language interpreter in order to provide your deaf clients with uh, effective communication. So these types of affirmative steps throughout the whole of disability law are called reasonable accommodations. And if there's one thing that you know about disability law, it's that phrase reasonable accommodation. Uh, in general, when you're an employer, a service provider, a government agency, pretty much anybody, you will be required to provide reasonable accommodations to employees, patrons, customers, citizens who have disabilities if such accommodations are uh, required to give them an equal opportunity to enjoy whatever it is that you're doing or providing. The next basic piece is the answer to the question who is a person with a disability? So in, in broad strokes, under federal law, you are a person with a disability if you have a mental or physical impairment that substantially limits you in one or more major life activities. So what are major life activities? Um, well, there's the obvious ones. Uh, walking, speaking, breathing, uh, thinking, standing, those types of things, but also uh, the less obvious ones also. So... Uh, Pretty much, uh, the list is, is, is not exhaustive, and if, if it can be construed as a major life activity and you have trouble doing it, you're probably going to be considered disabled under federal law. With that introduction, I'll get into the basic federal statutes. Um, again, a point of the, the point of this body of law is to ensure equal opportunity and access. Um, so taken as a whole, there should not be much that isn't covered by the statutes that I'm going to go over just briefly here. The first is the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. This is the big one. It's the reason why we have uh, those blue handicapped parking placards. It's the reason we have ramps um, going into public buildings. It's the reason we have curb cuts um, on public streets. Before the ADA, a uh, curb cut to a person with a wheelchair might as well have been a 50-foot wall. So it's, uh, it's the most important piece of, of federal law and uh, we'll, we'll discuss the three main titles. There are more titles, but we won't go into a couple of them. Title I of the ADA covers employment. So obviously it's unlawful to discriminate in hiring on the basis of disability. Um, but Title I also requires that employers provide employees with disabilities reasonable accommodations in the workplace. So that might mean uh, a modified schedule for more frequent breaks. It might mean uh, the provision of special equipment. Uh, there's, uh, it can take a, a variety of forms, countless forms. So that's a very sort of employee-specific inquiry that an employer has to be prepared to have, first of all, and then possibly to provide. So Title I is a big one. Um, the purpose of it is to ensure that people with disabilities can participate in the workforce, which is a great goal for everybody. So Title II of the ADA covers the activities of state and local government. Uh, this means that every city, county, state, municipality must not discriminate and must provide reasonable accommodations to the public, which it serves. And this applies to all programs act or activities. So public schools, public universities, state courts, city zoning, state prisons, county jails, bus systems, public parks, anything that a city or a county or a state is doing has to be compliant with Title II of the ADA. Um, 
And, and that, that is pretty far reaching. So every state or local building has to be physically accessible. We're talking ramps, we're talking restrooms, curb cuts, reserved handicap parking, um, things like providing publications in alternative formats, be that braille or, or what have you. Um, the provision of sign language interpreters in court proceedings. Um, there's, there's a lot of reasonable accommodations that uh, local government has to make. Moving on to Title III of the ADA. That covers public accommodations, which despite the word public, really pr refers to private businesses. So that's going to cover pretty much every private business or facility that you can imagine. Restaurants, hotels, grocery stores, movie theaters, stadiums, dry cleaners, law offices. Um, almost everything out there is going to be covered by Title III of the ADA. That means that er nearly every business must be physically accessible, must also provide reasonable accommodations, such as allowing service animals, providing interpreters, um, changing the way that you do business, basically. Uh, next, the Fair Housing Amendments Act of 1988. This one covers almost all housing and housing-related businesses. It means that most housing must be physically accessible and must also allow for reasonable accommodations, such as allowing assistive animals in no-pet apartment complexes, um, allowing a tenant to install grab bars or other architectural modifications. Next, the Individuals with Disabilities in Education Act, also known as IDEA. This provides that every student in public schools will have a free, appropriate public education. So schools will be physically accessible and will provide individualized special education for children with disabilities. Um, and next, the, the granddaddy of all of these acts, the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. This applies to any recipient of federal funding, which is a really broad area. Most local and state governments are going to be double covered under the Rehab Act and Title II of the ADA. Uh, public schools are covered. Any colleges that distribute federal aid, which is all of them, are covered. And it imposes the same reasonable accommodation mandates found in all of the other statutes. So finally, all of these statutes provide for private causes of action, damages, and uh, most importantly, attorney's fees. 